Let's take you out to San Francisco. Rich Aurelia takes ball one inside from Tolberg. Aurelia is hitting 327. 36 homers, 35 doubles, 5 triples, 94 driven in. Barry Bonds right behind him. One out, nobody on, no score. And the count goes to 2 0. Aurelia has hit 24 of his home runs since the All Star break. Of course, that's a great pace, but it's also tough being a, a giant these days because that's not even close to what Barry Bonds has done since the break. Bonds has hit 30 since the break. 2 0 the count. High and tight, ball three. Bonds coming up next, sitting on 69 home runs. His two year old daughter, Aisha, in the stands as always. And it's a four pitch walk to Aurelia. So he takes first. And now Barry Bonds, who homered here on Friday to center field, he homered again yesterday, a shot into McCovey Cove to right field. He also homered the last time the Giants faced the Padres. Last Sunday, he hit two homers in San Diego. And the fans show their appreciation for what he has done this year. A lot of them giving him a standing ovation here at Candle at Candlestick. I'm still over at my favorite park, Pac Bell, I meant. You saw Bonds, he's one home run away from McGuire's all time record. And perhaps just as notable, that slugging percentage, right now it's the best ever. One ball to no strikes. The change that missing. It's got to be a lonely spot to be a pitcher in this ballpark against this hitter. You're a bum no matter what you do. <laughs> One ball to no strikes. Up and away with another changeup. Two and zero. Oh. Padres have been going after Bonds fairly aggressively. When he homered here Friday night, he homered on a three and zero oh pitch against the rookie Jason Middlebrook. Now it's two and zero. Oh. Aurelia at first. Three and up. Well, obviously, if you're a Tolbert, you're trying to be very careful with Barry, but you also have to try to win the ball game. And if you walk Barry after walking Aurelia, you're going to have Jeff Kent up there sitting on a pitch. And he walks him on four pitches. The 166 time Bonds has walked this year. He's also closing in on the babe in that category. Now let's take you back to Bill Pito at the studio. John, thanks. In fact, 170 Babe Ruth's single season record for most walks in a season. Bonds just four away from that. We'll keep you posted on him throughout the afternoon. Back now to the game you're enjoying. Stay with us, everybody. Eric Lee, ring him up, sit him down. Lee Phillies two games out as they take the field. Ball zip zip three. against Florida, top of the third. Beautiful day here in the city by the bay. Bright blue skies overhead. Temperatures up around 80 degrees. A spectacular day. A big ball game in the pennant race for the Giants, who are two games back of first place Arizona with only seven to play. And Barry Bonds, one home run away from equaling the all time home run record for a season. And he has homered in each of the first two games of this series. Brian Tolberg, the young right hander, pitching for the Padres. Not an overpowering pitcher, but one who throws well. He's got a good sinker, changeup, curve, slider, and he has won eight while losing four on a ball club that has a losing record. Tolberg walked Barry Bonds on four pitches in the first inning, and he's facing J.T. Snow right now. Starting the second inning, the Giants are leading this game one to nothing. Three balls and two strikes to Snow, who is hitting sixth in the order. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Joe, nice to see you. Nice to see you, John, on a great day here in San Francisco, as you said. A little warmer, I thought, than 80, but it's really nice. Yeah. Well, it's whatever you say it is. <laughs> 105 degrees in San Francisco. But the one thing I was going to note here is that you were saying that Tolbert had good control, I was going to say, except when Barry Bonds walked up there. <laughs> he seemed to have lost everything. I mean, watch these pitches to Barry Bonds in the first thing. I don't think he really tried to get Barry out. Look at that. I mean, there's nothing that I don't think Barry could swing at any of these pitches, and especially when he got behind him, and you could hear the fans booing naturally. But the one thing that has impressed me about Barry the entire season, they have walked him and walked him, but it doesn't seem to affect him. He doesn't change. You know, he doesn't get all upset. He used to get upset. I remember talking to him a couple of years ago. He'd get upset. Now he takes his walk and just waits till the next time. Benito Santiago deep into left center field going back there is Crespo and it is gone a home run Santiago 
the former Padre with his fifth home run of the year and the Giants lead two nothing. And I know Barry Bonds is the most valuable player on the Giants but somewhere in there has to be room for Benito Santiago because this guy he wasn't even their starting catcher in spring training he came along and this guy catches every day at 37 years old day games after night games and he has really helped this pitching staff and he's contributed a lot with his bat as well high fastball up and in and watch this he gets good extension there and drives it in the left center field that's a pretty long part of this ballpark too. And that's his fifth home run of the season. Now Ramon Martinez and Ramon takes a cold strike over the outside. One, uh, two to nothing the Giants lead. The Arizona Diamondbacks playing this afternoon at home against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Chan Ho Park versus Albi Lopez in that game. They are just uh, getting started there. We'll keep you updated on that one. Santiago. Has given the Giants a two nothing lead here a big curveball from Tolbert in for a strike and it is one and two to Ramon Martinez who is hitting 251 he'd been in a long slump although he had been showing some signs of coming out of that in the just concluded road trip and he is called out on strikes strike three two down the batting orders for today's game the next hell batting order for the Giants. And here it is turned in by Dusty Baker. Marvin Bernard hitting lead off in center. Rich Aurelia at short. Barry Bonds in left. Both Aurelia and Bonds walked in the first inning. Then Jeff Kent singled Aurelia home. He's been hot. He's at second inning cleanup. Then Vanderwall, Snow, Santiago, Martinez, and then Levon Hernandez, the pitcher, batting ninth. There's Barry. And it's a slugger talk. Barry Bonds and the big cat, Andres Galarraga. A lot of home runs, a lot of experience there. And here's Levon Hernandez. Belting a hanging curveball down the left field line. And Levon will have an easy double. Hernandez, who came into the game hitting 295, the second best batting average among all pitchers behind only Mike Hampton of Colorado. Well, he gets a high hanging curveball, like you said, but I mean, watch how he keeps his hands up above the ball. Look at that. I mean, that's a beautiful swing right there. Real, really level. Watch how level his swing is. I mean, he gets on top of that ball and lines it in the left center, left field line for a double. And I have to tell you, that's, he can hit. <laughs> well, Levon got his 24th hit of the year. The last time a Giants pitcher got more hits than that, his name was Juan Marichal. 28 hits he had for the Giants in the early 60s, I think 62 or 63, one of those years. Well, Marichal made more starts, though. They he, pitched every fourth day. He made 40, 40 starts. Yeah, every yeah. fourth day he would pitch. And, and he was still batting for himself in the eighth or ninth inning most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> that was a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> he was usually leading the ball game, so he stayed in. You're right. Marvin Bernard now, the Giants' leadoff man. And he takes a called strike two. Oh, and to Bobby Bonds, the father of Barry. I stopped by the booth here with us. Bobby, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you, John, very much. And a, 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 a proud time for the Bonds family. Yeah, it is. You know, um, nobody would have really expected this, but I tell you one thing, we're having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Good. That's the important thing, I think, to enjoy it. Sometimes it becomes very stressful when you're chasing records or whatever, but the key, as far as I'm concerned, is to enjoy it. And, and one of the things I wanted to ask you about is you were bad at Bobby's, you were Barry's. I get you mixed up a lot of times, Bobby. <laughs> but you were Barry's hitting instructor with the Giants, you know, when he, when he played, when he first came over. Bernard that's foul and I would like to ask you you know how you see the changes in Barry from the time he came from Pittsburgh to now because we have shots of him and they look very different. Well you know he, I think he's a lot more disciplined really right now Joe you know what we worked on you know I've worked with Barry ever since he was in high school even before high school and the most important thing we've tried to work on is, is him maintaining a good balance something that a lot of hitters um, don't seem to be able to right. do. And um, if you watch Barry, you'll very seldom see him off balance or chase a bad pitch or something like that. Plus, that has to do with, ha uh, with having a good eye. But we really concentrate on his balance and putting on a level swing. One and two to Bernard. Pop fly. Shallow right. Jackson out. And Bubba <laughs> takes it. Bubba Trammell in shallow right field. But the Giants had another run. And now the Padres with Tolberg, then Ricky Henderson coming up, who has his own rendezvous with destiny. 
the cantilevered portion of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge heading from Yerba Buena Island over into Oakland. Here's the Padres next held batting order Ricky Henderson in left D'Angelo Jimenez Ryan Klesko Bubba Trammell Ben Davis Cesar Crespo Alex Arias Damian Jackson and the pitcher batting ninth Ryan Tolberg and it is Tolberg leading it off here in the third inning for the Padres Ricky Henderson coming up next Ricky who has scored more runs than any player in the history of the game in his career save one and that one is Ty Cobb and Ricky with his next run will equal Cobb and that's Ricky's game his game has been getting on base disrupting pitchers concentrations setting up RBI opportunities for the guys behind him and obviously he's done it pretty well because we know Ty Cobb was one of the all time greats a 367 lifetime average but he just one run away from equaling Cobb. Well Bobby Bonds was a great leadoff hitter himself different type than Ricky and I, what are your thoughts on Ricky and you were telling me a story about talking to him. You know when Ricky came up he was asking about leading off Joe and I told him I says Ricky that's you all have, a base hit into center field. You have a little power Ricky and I says you know the pitchers are taught to get ahead of you. I says you know uh, sometimes you might want to look for a fastball sat on until you get it and, and if you get it take a good swing at it not knowing that he would break my home run <laughs> yeah, record. Exactly. Had I known that I might not have told him that. <laughs> yeah Bobby had the home run record for leadoff home runs right. before Ricky's heads up to 79 now leading off the game. game. The home yeah run. that was a Bobby Bonds specialty. specialty. Yeah. yeah. Well but Bobby hit a lot of home runs and I would never thought of you as a typical leadoff hitter anyway but you hit there. Well Ricky has led off games with home runs 79 times. He doesn't hit with much power any longer. Ricky with seven home runs this year but an on base average of 371 which when you consider he's only hitting 232 he still can take a walk and he can still cause trouble in the base pass. He has 25 steals which for a 42 year old is not bad. <laughs> yeah but he doesn't look like a 42 year old and and the fact of that 371 is better than I guarantee him three quarters of the leadoff hitters in baseball. That would not hit very hard. Kent will go to first and Henderson is gone and there is one away. I, I heard a, a, you know, Barry talking Bobby uh, about when he was in college at Arizona State Ricky Henderson would be down with Oakland in uh, spring training and how uh, Ricky occasionally would uh, talk to some of the, the college kids and actually talk to Barry a little bit about base daily utilizing his speed. Well he did you know Barry and Ricky uh, they've been friends for a long time since Barry was at Arizona State and um, Ricky used to spend a lot of time with Barry uh, uh, talking about base running and uh, you know he's helped Barry throughout his career but you know when you look at Ricky Henderson you say a leadoff hitter uh, it's hard for me to envision anyone that has scored runs stole bases uh, did the little interest things better than Ricky Henderson. No I don't think there has ever been I I actually think just calling him the best leadoff hitter in the history of the game may not even be doing him justice for what he's all all the things that he's accomplished. I mean he has done that job better than anyone else but I don't think there was anyone that could dominate a game in the 80s and 90s like Ricky Henderson could even the guys that hit home runs you could throw four pitches around them like they did Barry in the first inning but if you did that to Ricky Henderson your troubles were just starting so he could really dominate a game in my opinion better than anyone at that time when he was at the top of his game. Yeah I have to agree with you I tell you one thing there's nothing on the baseball field that he wasn't doing right. and, and you hated to walk him and you hated to pitch him. <laughs> exactly and he, and he also won gold gloves that's right know, for defense so I mean he was a great great player. One out Jimenez the hitter with Tolberg at second and the count is two and oh Klesko the power hitter is on deck so maybe instead of saying best leadoff man in history just maybe one of the great offensive forces I, in I, the history of the game. That's, I have to agree with that too. Let me find my column and see what I said there. I think that's what I said John that's pretty good. That's a base hit to center for Jimenez Tolberg held up to make sure it wasn't caught. And he goes over to third base and has to stop and so the Padres are set up nicely here for their power hitter Ryan Plesko 28 homers and 108 runs battered in. I mean when we talk about you know, Bobby Bonds Willie Mays Barry Bonds the, the great home run hitters the great right. sluggers but not talking about home runs you see how Tolberg had to hold up there to make sure it didn't get caught before he moved on. But I mean guys hit lots of home runs he driving lots of runs well we know right. what that means Ricky Henderson getting on base all of the time more than 5000 times now in his <laughs> yeah. career stealing bases he's stolen 457 more bases than anybody else in the history of the game 
and then getting himself into position to score runs. They get one there, and that would be the only one. Classical runs pretty well, by the way. That was no sure thing, double play. Tolberg scores, and it is two to one, Giants. Now let's get an update. Here's Bill Pito. All right, John, thanks. The Giants keenly interested in the ongoing between the D-backs and the Dodgers. Giants just two games behind Arizona. This is Sean Green all the way to the wall, drives in Alex Cora, Dodgers up one zip, bottom one. There you see the, the numbers for the Giants. It's getting late. Seven games left, including today. Still two games back of Arizona. The Giants need some help. They don't have any games left with Arizona. And they're becoming, for one of the few times ever in that long, heated rivalry, they're big Dodger fans today. <laughs> but I have to tell you, John, they're two games behind. If they can get it to one, you know, that's the key. You get it to one, it puts a lot of pressure on the other team that you're chasing. But as long as they have a two game lead, they know they can make a mistake and still hold on. So you put pressure on them by getting it down to one, and obviously they need help to do that. Bubba Trammell takes inside. One ball, no strikes. Klesko got his 109th RBI in that infield out. Two to one, the Giants ahead here in the third inning. Bubba Trammell had a single his first time. Well, Bobby, uh, I, you know, when Barry breaks the record when he hits number 71 then uh, you're going to be involved in uh, some post game ceremonies so if he doesn't do it here in San Francisco today you'll be traveling with the Giants again <laughs> yeah I have to make some more <laughs> make some more road trips yeah so if he doesn't do it today which I'm hoping that he does um, I'll have to go to Houston I'll be in Houston to, to watch him there and hopefully that it, uh, that he'll get it there Giants play in Houston Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday at very home run friendly Enron Field it's too bad you didn't play there yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, some of these ballparks, I think a lot of us wish we would have played in. They uh, sit by Trammell to left field. Barry Bonds over to pick it up, gets it back in, stopping in second is Clesco. The Padres threatening now to, to make more trouble for Levon Hernandez. Two on, two out. Well, a guy like you, Bobby, hidden in there instead of the Astrodome. Can you imagine? Oh, that, that, that's amazing. You know, Joe, when I left this game, I was 39th on the all time list of home runs. <laughs> okay. And playing in Candlestick Park, that, that, of course, you were there. Yeah. And in the Astrodome. Right. I mean, you didn't hit a lot of home runs. I remember. Right. Uh, and you're going to test this. If we hit 30 home runs, we thought we, we were great. To, we thought we were great. And now yeah. if you hit 30, I mean, they don't even <laughs> look at you. Now, now it is amazing. Now Barry is a 40-40 man, right? Canseco was the first, and now Alex Rodriguez has become a 40-40 man. But the guy who looked like a sure thing to be the first 40-40 man was Bobby Bonds. But why? What happened to that 40th homer? You had 39 <laughs> homers, 1973, and. That 40th homer just never came. What, what happened? <laughs> well, you know, I always just tell people now, I hit one in the 73 All-Star game, so I'll count that as 40. <laughs> 40, 40. <laughs> I remember that year because I was actually pulling for you to do it, and I remember we had a couple of discussions when we played against each other. You said you thought you were pressing a little bit yeah. trying to get that 40th home run. Well, there must be some kind of a story we could come up with, though, Bobby, on that. <laughs> You know, like you crushed one at Candlestick and a big gust of wind came in. And <laughs> well, I tell you one thing. Uh, that Now, that, that is true. Happen. <laughs> that's it. That's it. No, that's Lots true. of times. Lots of times. I mean, I tell you one thing. We'd have played in the ballpark like this. I'll guarantee you it, it would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bobby Bonds, uh, he homered in the All-Star. You were the MVP of the All-Star. I was the MVP game. of that yeah, particular 1973. year. 1973. And uh, it was a great year, 40-40, or as it turned out, a 39-43 year. 39-43. Yeah, you know, it was a, you know, it, it was a great year. But you have to remember, you know, we had Hank Aaron, we had Mays, we had so many great ball players. Joe, of course, except there and, go the and runners. You see him. The throw, and it's off the glove of Martinez, and rolls away from him, and that will get Clasco home with the tying run. It went from, would it be a double play to end the inning, or rather, be an out at third to end the inning? to Martinez losing a grip on it and that actually not even knowing where it went and the game is tied. John I'm, I'm shocked that more people do not try to steal third base off Levon. He does a pretty good job to hold him at first base. He concentrates there but when he gets runners at second base he has this big lazy motion kind of to the plate and I'm just surprised that they don't try to steal third more often and Klesko took off and did so. Trammell ends up at third. Two and one now to Ben Davis, and that's ball three. Instead of saying big lazy motion, I meant big easy motion <laughs> to the plate. He has this easy motion, and then he tries to pop the ball on you. That'll be an error on Ramon Martinez. Looked to me, Joe, like he just 
trying to put the tag on before he actually caught the ball. Well, he, that's exactly what happened. The throw was there, and it was on the inside part of the bag. But that's one of the problems the Giants have had all year. Their defense has not been as good this year as it has been in the past. You know, they've made a lot of mistakes and a lot of errors that they didn't used to make. I mean, this is not your typical Giants ball club. They've made a lot more errors, you know, especially in touch plus situations. Well, they, they gave away a run there. This inning could well be over with the lead intact. Instead, they've uh, given away the run to tie the game, and the Padres are threatening to get more. But uh, we were talking with Bobby Bonds, and uh, we want to thank Bobby for, for stopping by and sharing some time with us up here in the booth. And uh, uh, the Bonds family. Now, now Barry, I mean, he, he's this is quite a family. Bobby Bonds, a great player. Now, Barry Bonds having. Maybe the greatest year anybody's ever had when you look at all the numbers put together. Now Barry says Reggie Jackson is his cousin, right? Yeah. All right. And Reggie, any other, Reggie, any other? Reggie Smith, uh, his mother, and uh, Reggie Smith, his mother, I think, are sisters. Right. So is so Reggie's that, is Reggie an uncle? Reggie is, I think, Barry's second or third cousin. And right. then uh, Gary Maddox's wife is um, Barry's cousin. So <laughs> the Maddox children are involved. So we come up from a long, good line. <laughs> A baseball dynasty. <laughs> Look at that. 332 home runs for Bobby. Along with the stolen bases. So the Bonds, the Bonds family closing in on 900 home runs now. Well, it, for a while there, every time Barry would break a record, it was Bobby's, where it consisted of power and speed. You know, the 30-30 club, the 300 300 club. I mean, it, Bobby was the initial member <laughs> yeah. and then Barry just kind of moved by him and it's kind of interesting for me because I've known Bobby so long I knew Barry as a kid and the same thing with Ken Griffey and Ken Griffey Jr. I mean the, the sons have actually statistically outplayed, outplayed the fathers and I say statistically yeah <laughs> one and one the count and a curveball to Crespo in there for a strike one or two but well, Bobby uh, congratulations uh, for the, uh, the Year that, that Barry's having for the uh, the great fun that it's I, I know it's been for you and, and the whole family and uh, uh, here's hoping that you'll be able to celebrate it with uh, with Barry today right yeah, here I in San Francisco. I really hope he does it today, John. I, you know, and I think it's good. it's been good for baseball and I think it's been good for America. Right. You know that uh, it's something that everybody gets to watch and everybody gets to enjoy. It's been a lot of fun. Ben Davis steals second. The Giants don't make a throw. Bobby Bonds again. Many thanks for coming by. Bobby. John, thank you, Joe. Always thank you very buddy. much. Thanks, always, Bobby. Sir. Yeah. Bobby Bonds, one of the greats of the game. He came along. The Giants had Willie Mays in center, Bobby yeah. Bonds in right, Willie McCovey at first base. They won a lot of a lot of games with those guys. A lot of games. Crespo now with runners at second and third. It's a 2-2 tie in the third inning. And what you're seeing here, John, is is the fact that the San Diego Padres are trying to take advantage. Of Levon Hernandez on the bases. I mean, they're just trying to steal a base, put pressure on the Giants' defense, and it has worked so far in this ball game. Big pitcher to Cesar Crespo. Strike three call. But the Padres get two runs to tie the game. One a gift from the Giants. The error charged to Ramon Martinez. No steal, by the way, for Klesko on that play. And uh, the Padres have tied the game. Two to two. Now the Giants will come up with their three all-star game starters, Joe. Rich Aurelia, Barry Bonds, and Jeff Kent. And we have a big crowd inside the ballpark. And a, a huge armada of maritime craft of all shapes and sizes out in McCovey Cove you get a little look there and look at this and Scott Walker with the ESPN is out there somewhere. John thank you and again there's a, uh, a ban actually on motorized boats within a sprinkler period here in McCovey Cove they're trying to protect safety as you can see though it hasn't stopped a large number of people from coming here to McCovey Cove there are three police boats from San Francisco and from Marin County that are patrolling this to keep safety here but you're going to see because of the ban on uh, on motorized boats you're seeing a lot of rafts you're seeing a lot of kayaks you're seeing a lot of people with different strategies as well to get that famous home run ball you're seeing nets and poles you're also seeing people the last yesterday 
we saw a couple that had their dog on the wrap with them, hoping the dog could go out and get that lucky ball. Now, if somebody does make money off that ball, it won't be from Bonds. His manager says that they will not pay to retrieve that ball. They will try to negotiate, and they'll try to be aggressive in doing it. So we'll send it back to you now, John, from the best seat out of the house. <laughs> All right. Scott Walker out in McCovey Cove. There have been 17 balls hit by the Giants into McCovey Cove in the two years since the ballpark opened, and 15 of them have hit, been hit by Barry Bonds. Well, I tell you what, there may not be a splash hit today. With all that out there, there one of them, the ball's probably going to land someplace. It's going to land on one of the craft. Well, yesterday, he did hit one out into McCovey Cove. They measured it at 437 feet from home plate. It was a line drive. And it got out there in a hurry. Guy in a surfboard actually got to it. Now you saw maybe it looked like the ball actually bounced off the out of the side of the ballpark and into McCovey Cove. But there are some fans, some prax, practical jokesters. Now take a look at this. Here's the ball itself on its way. Okay. Now watch it. It goes clearly way out into McCovey Cove. No question about it. But that wasn't the only ball that ended up in the cone. Look at these two that are surrounded by the white circles. Those were thrown in by practical jokesters. Usually they write something on, on those balls that says something to the effect of sucker. <laughs> so somebody dives in, grabs yeah. that ball, the phony ball, all excited, and then looks at it and it says sucker. And Tolberg throws out Rich Aurelia, so Aurelia is gone in one pitch. He walked his first time. And now Barry Bonds comes up. He walked on four pitches the first time he faced Tolberg. That was with one out and Aurelia at first base in the first inning. There's the, the Bonds family, his two-year-old daughter, Aisha, his wife, Liz. And the momentary pause is because they have to change the balls so that they will be able to identify the ball that Barry hits for number 70 or 71 or whatever. Uh, there you see John Shulock getting the replacement balls. So here is Barry Bonds. Ground ball into the defense. That's the shortstop playing second base. And Jimenez throws out Barry Bonds. Two men gone on two pitches here. Well, he threw him a big curveball. This is a rolling curveball. Barry thought he, and he did have it timed perfectly. He hit it hard. But he hits it right into the defense that they have set up here. You have three guys on the right side, and he drills the ball sharply. That's a normal base hit, normally a base hit for anyone else. But when they put a shift on like that, the shortstop is playing in that position. So Barry Bonds, 0 for 1 today, with a walk. Two down on the Giants' third, the batter Jeff Kent. And that's the difficult thing if you're Barry Bonds. The first time up, the guy didn't even come close. So you're not sure if you're going to get a pitch to hit any time in the ball game. So he gets one and he hits it hard. That's been his M.O. He's usually hit it out of the ballpark. I watched him play a game in Dodger Stadium the other day and he didn't have but one pitch to hit the entire ball game and he hit a home run. And that's really what he's been able to do so well down the stretch. He doesn't get many chances to get up there and foul off pitches and get a good look at the pitcher. He has to pick a pitch and then hit it out of the ballpark and he's been doing a great job of that lately. Jeff Kent the hitter Kent who singled home the Giants run in the first inning their first run and it takes a curveball outside one ball one strike Kent has had 14 hits in his last 29 at bats dating back to last weekend in San Diego Kent a liner to left field but he did not get underneath it and right into the glove of Henderson and so Tolberg retires the three Giants all stars in quick succession. No homers into the cove, not now. ESPN's Major League Baseball is presented by Nextel, how business gets done. And in part by Goodyear, reminding you to take all your journeys on the wings of Goodyear. San Francisco. And right now, all roads lead to Pacific Bell Park. The beautiful new home of the Giants that has transformed the direction of this franchise, which used to play in a big, old, ugly, cold, windy Candlestick Park. 
now all the roads all the bridges seem to lead right here everybody wants to get in there's the, the beautiful suspension part of the Bay Bridge heading into San Francisco not far from Pac Bell Park is where it enters the city there's Yerba Buena Island you go through the tunnel and uh, then across the bridge into Oakland Oakland where the athletics play and they've been playing awfully well lately the athletics have already clinched a spot in the postseason Ivan Hernandez just misses outside to Alex Arias for ball one one ball and no strikes Arias seventh in the order followed by Damian Jackson and then Brian Tolberg two to two the score fourth inning that one is hit hard to left field bonds going back and it is going to hit off the front bumper of the car you hit one off the bumper of the car <laughs> Joe and you've hit one pretty well so a double for Arias leading off for the Padres here in the fourth inning well we talked with Bobby Bonds the father of uh, uh, Barry Bonds for a brief time and now as uh, we mentioned all roads lead to Pacific Bell Park these days and with us is the commissioner of baseball Mr. Bud Selig and uh, Mr. Commissioner welcome to the broadcast. Thank you John Joe how are you. I'm great I'm great. Uh, nice to see both yeah. of you especially on this absolutely beautiful day. Here. Beautiful day you're going to follow Barry around a while. Yeah, now? I'm <laughs> going home tonight but I'll uh, I'll be in Houston Tuesday okay. if uh, if needed and right. follow him around and then of course we have a I'm supposed to be in San Diego Friday night for to honor Tony Gwynn and Saturday night to honor Cal Ripken Jr. So. Busy schedule. Very busy. This next week is busy with a lot of a lot of good races left, at least in the National League. Anyway. Damian Jackson, the hitter, fouled out the first his first time. So, what 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 is the commissioner's prediction for when Barry will <laughs> tie and then pass this record? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, John. I'm going to leave that to you and Joe. <laughs> Uh, how's that for passing it well, Hey, what do you say? You're not just a commissioner. You've been in baseball a long time. You know better to leave those alone. Yeah, huh? You got that right. Every time I've ever made a prediction, Joe, it's been wrong. So, I, uh, John, you don't mind. I won't touch that. It's all right, interesting, well, though. The American League, they're all settled. I mean, the four. It Cleveland, really is. Yeah. You know, I was going over this morning all the standings and everything, and it really is remarkable when you. And here's the National League with uh, not only a great, great wild card races, but each division still up in the air, although. Atlanta took a little step today to say the least. One and one to Damian Jackson. Now, now it's interesting Atlanta. I mean the Mets had a big lead over Atlanta last Sunday at Shea Stadium and lost it and then a big lead again this weekend in a game in Atlanta and lost it. Were it not for those two games the Mets would only be one game. Yeah. Absolutely right. Unbelievable. I, I unbelievable yesterday was it was just absolutely shocking. Yeah. You have a six run lead you bring in your star relief pitcher and um, Jackson can't can't get to it and Aris is going to be held at third base as Bernard comes up with it in shallow center. So the Padres after getting two in the third are right back at him here in the fourth inning but you know going back to the, the Mets and Atlanta the, the Mets kind of came out of nowhere and as we take a look at this play again. Good hitting there by Jackson. Yeah, Joe. good hitting by Jackson. But I'm a little shocked that the base runner Arias wasn't able to score. It was a ground ball in the center field. Center field is the longest throw, and he's around the bag before Bernard has the ball. But I guess they're playing it a little safe there. He seemed to not break right away, yeah. although the ball was hit behind him. So runners at first and third. The pitcher Tolberg up. He singled, and that started the two-run third-inning rally for the Padres. A two-two tie in the fourth inning. Levon Hernandez. Back in a lot of trouble here. The Giants infield double play depth up the middle. And Tolberg's got another base hit. Coming in to score is Arias. Over to second is Jackson. And three straight hits to start the inning against Levon Hernandez. And the Giants bullpen is going to get busy. Well, the problem he has with the pitcher is he gets the ball up. He doesn't hit it hard, but it's already in the air, so it becomes a little bloop single to left center field. He has to get the ball down. We've talked about the fact that he gets a lot of double play ground balls for his team, but Today he's getting the ball up a little bit and he's paying the price. That pitches up, hits him on the handle. It's still a base hit. Watch it jams him, but it's still because it's up. It's a base hit. Tolberg, who had six hits in 36 at bats all year, is two for two today, and that's his first RBI. Well, the Giants bullpen gets busy, and uh, Dave Regetta, the Giants pitching coach, is out there talking to Levon Hernandez. But, uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner, the the Mets. I mean, they they made this spirited run, just rising. Uh, out of nowhere they were off the, the, the screen entirely and we all sort of stood up and took notice when they had that 
emotional night oh. and that beautiful night at Shea. Unbelievable. The yeah. first big sporting event in New York after the, the atrocities in New York. And uh, now that was a night to remember. One of the most emotional nights that I've ever seen uh, and, and uh, capped by wonderful home run by Mike Piazza which was wonderful for the city and the crowd they won the next day and went in leading last Sunday yeah. four to one I was home watching it and I sat in shock and yesterday when I heard I uh, I was a very nervous game watching my many years of running I don't know that I could have survived those ninth <laughs> innings and yesterday I can assure you I could not have survived that well here's Ricky Henderson two men on nobody on Ricky it's a double play ball to short really the second one Kent the first high but plenty of time and they get the double play with Jackson going to third base but now with two down. Meanwhile there's an update from elsewhere with Bill Pito. All right John talking about tight divisions the Astros need a win over the Cubs to stay two in front of the cards the cards beating Pittsburgh today. Rondell White from Chicago earlier a two run home run here a game tying RBI single six six in the top of the eighth. Meantime the Phillies need a win to stay two behind or I should say with a win will be only one behind Atlanta. And Derek Lee, however, for the Marlins, 21st of the year. Marlins up three zip. All right, Bill. You know, the, the, the schedule kind of works against the Phillies. They have no home games remaining, and the Braves have no road games remaining. Here we've got two down. They menace at the plate with a runner at third base. But, uh, Mr. Commissioner, it, it, it seemed to me from afar, watching the, the goings on in New York, the ceremonies the emotion that ball is a base hit to left field by Jimenez and it is now four to two San Diego and Jimenez has his third consecutive hit and very similar pitches he just kind of flips it to left field and I think that's going to be all for LeVon it has to be because Dusty Baker is on his way out lucky for the double play ball in the middle this would be a huge inning. exactly so you're still thinking baseball <laughs> yes I am yes I am Joe and there's good extension by Jimenez he just goes the other way we saw him do that in the first inning and now he does it again here in the fourth inning so Jason Christensen gets summoned from the bullpen early on we're in the fourth inning four to two San Diego Commissioner Bud Seelig is here with us still want to get to the commissioner about a couple of points but we'll be right back stay with us and Jason Christensen on to pitch for the Giants now with two men down Jimenez at first base and the dangerous Ryan Klesko at the plate the commissioner of baseball Bud Seelig is here with us at Pacific Bell Park Klesko has hit into a force play twice but also has picked up an RBI and he fouls that one but uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner I was starting to talk about that when the Mets resume play at right. Shea Stadium and I know that uh, Mayor Rudy Giuliani in New York the, the President Bush had all talked several times about the importance of, of getting back to work, getting back to normal, the importance right. of, of that for the country. And uh, people were sort of wondering, where does baseball fit into that whole scenario? And I was thinking maybe that when we saw what happened in New York with, with the Mets and their fans, that maybe that was a, a part of the answer that, that there definitely is a, an important place for the game at this time. What do you, what do well, you I, I do, and I agonize during that week. And you, you both have heard me say this a lot that, that, that I believe baseball is a social institution with social responsibilities. And so, what was my real criteria? Was what can we do to be helpful? What's the best time to come back in our own, as I say, little way? And, and uh, can we help? Can we bring people together? And that's what really, uh, that's why I made the decision uh, after considering all the factors. Into the bullpen, Barry Bonds, stumbling over part of the bullpen mound, makes the grab. Commissioner Bud Selig. Maybe today will be the historic day for Barry Bonds. Well, I'll be here with you guys, and if not, we're going to be together in the coming weeks. Thanks. Thanks for stopping in. SPN's coverage of Major League Baseball in the pennant race, presented by Nextel. Four to two, the Padres lead the Giants now, and of course, we're all excited about the Barry Bonds approach on the all-time home run record. On the other hand, for the Giants. The number one priority is staying alive in the pennant race. They're two games back of Arizona. Only seven games left on the schedule. Arizona is trailing the Dodgers and Chan Ho Park one to nothing in the last of the third in Phoenix. But the Giants have their own problems now. They are trailing the Padres four to two against a tough pitcher, Brian Tolbert. But John, that's why you saw Dusty Baker give 
Levon Hernandez such a quick hook. We've both seen him leave Levon in a lot longer in tougher situations, but Dusty realizes if he loses this ball game and the Diamondbacks come back and win, they're three down with six to go, and the and that's just I mean you're not going to be able to make those games up very easily. So I think that's why we saw him take Levon out. He knows how crucial today's game is for this ball club, and especially with them going on the road to Houston. The uh, right field line ball dude, as they call him here in San Francisco, a, uh, uh, an object came loose from the stands out there, and that is uh, Dick Gregory. And that's ball four to Vanderwall. Anyway, he had some uh, misadventures out there going after the uh, the loose ball that came out onto the field. So now Vanderwall over to first base. And Tolbert will go to work against J.T. Snow. J.T. Snow. Now, this guy's been pretty steady for the Giants with his 20 homers and 90 plus RBIs every year, but this year having the worst year of his life. And that is a changeup for a strike. Snow, who's a perennial slow starter, got off to a horrible start this year and then got hurt. And that was a new wrinkle. JT had not had disabled disc trips in the past, but this year he'd been on the disabled disc three different times. And has lost that everyday job. Andres Galarraga acquired before the trading deadline. Snow pulled that curveball foul, and Dick Gregory goes out, makes a dive, knocks it down. Oh, what a play! who owns a vineyard up in Sonoma a former halfback for the University of Montana recently inducted into the Montana High School Hall of Fame for football and then a halfback for the Chicago Bears a, a few years back Joe <laughs> Oh and to the count to snow that's a double play ball to short and then it's the second. Jackson the first. Not in time. Well, JT Snow hits the ground ball a short and watch it takes Damian Jackson a long time to get there. He was playing him over towards the hole. Now when he gets it, it takes him a little extra time to get rid of it. And you can see the ball is late. You see him getting there late. He should already be there as a second baseman. The shortstop had to hold his throw up a little bit, but because he was playing a little bit more toward right field, it took him a little while to get there. So JT Snow is aboard, one out. And Benito Santiago, he homered back in the second inning, at which time the Giants were leading this game two to nothing. Since then, things have gone bad for the Giants. Curveball, a strike call over the outside. The Padres got two runs in the third, including an unearned run on a drop throw by Ramon Martinez, the Giants' third baseman, and then they got two more runs in the fourth. And that is called strike two. Owen two to Santiago. He had a four hit game here Friday against the Padres, the team with which he began his big league career. He was the Ivan Rodriguez of his time. Yes he was. Great defensive catcher when he first came up. Tremendous arm. Strongest in the game at that time. Regularly throwing out runners from his knees trying to steal. And he is called out on strikes. Three pitches and he never swung at one of them. That may be the first time in his career. <laughs> You're right. He is a free swinger. <laughs> he is that. Coming up on ESPN Sports Center, Reese Davis and Brian Kenny are putting to get today's show together. Barry Bonds post game report. Kurt Warner will take on the Dolphins. And Jeff Gordon goes for his sixth win of the season. And following Sports Center, stay tuned for NFL primetime here on ESPN. Some Major League Baseball coverage today would have been the original schedule, the final day of the regular season, with the postseason beginning the day after tomorrow. But 
with the stoppage of play after the terrorist attacks. The games that were missed that week have been added to the schedule this coming week. So next Sunday is now the final day of the regular season schedule. Ramon Martinez caught out on strikes his first time. The Giants are trailing four to two to the Padres. Brian Tolberg, the pitcher. And that's a strike. Mark Gardner, veteran right-hander, warming up in the Giants bullpen. The pitcher, Levon or the pitcher's spot, Levon Hernandez having been knocked out of the game. Do up next. And Damon Miner has come out on deck. That's a liner to right, base hit just in front. Of Bubba Trammell. Stopping at second, JT Snow. And Martinez gets a hit. The Giants' fourth hit of the game. And now Miner, a big slugger up from the Giants' minor league system, will come up. Good job by Martinez. He goes the other way with a fastball away, and he just lines it in front of the right field of Trammell for a base hit. So Miner walks away from the plate now. Greg Booker, the pitching coach, is going to the mound to talk to Brian Tolbert. Four to two, San Diego leading the Giants. Final meeting of the year between these clubs. And of course, the Padres have been taking it on the chin against the Giants all year long. The Giants are 14 and four against San Diego. The Giants and Padres opened the season playing against each other right here. The Giants won that game, and they've been. Beating up on the Padres regularly ever since. Especially here, they're eight and one against the Padres in this ballpark. The Giants have otherwise a losing record against their own division in games other than the ones they play with the Padres. And a breaking ball snaps in there for a called strike. One one to Miner. He is six feet seven inches tall, the twin brother of Ryan Miner. Now with Montreal, Ryan Miner at one time was considered the heir apparent at third base for Baltimore. And in fact, was the starting third baseman the night that Cal Ripken's consecutive game streak ended. Chases the high running fastball, 0 and 2 to count. Snow at second, Martinez at first. Brian Tolbert. And a pop up. Third baseman Alex Arias. And that's the inning. To San Diego. Making life tough on the Giants. We go to the fifth inning. Bubba Trammell will be coming up. Four to two Padres. Presented by Nextel on ESPN. The Padres four, the Giants two. It's a it's a beautiful, sunshiny, warm day in San Francisco. Uncharacter uncharacteristically warm here. Yeah, you say warm, I say hot. It's hot. <laughs> of course, uh, that's defined here as anything above 75 degrees. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> here in San Francisco, in the, in the Bay Area. There's Bubba Trammell, who has singled twice in this game, facing the new Giants pitcher, Mark Gardner. Gardner, the third Giants pitcher of the day. Gardner, a veteran, 39 years old, lives in Fresno, California. And he has been a dependable man for the Giants for, for several years. Aurelia throws out Trammell. That's the first time Bubba has been retired. Yvonne Hernandez, the Giants starter, got knocked out early in this game. Lasting only three and two thirds innings. So there's Gardner. Gardner was the Giants opening day starter for a few years, 96, 97, 98. And he pitched some big ball games late in seasons. 98, he pitched the Playoff game they had with the Cubs at Wrigley Field. They pitched the uh, the playoff game last October, that final playoff game at Shea Stadium. And his uh, fellow Fresno resident Bobby Jones got the best of him that day. And the Mets moved on. The Giants went home. I've actually always felt, John. And I know he started and did a great job last year for the Giants, but I've always kind of liked him in this role, medium to long relief. Because you're showing them something different than whoever started a ball game because he pitches completely different than anyone else. But when he starts and you get three or four looks at him, it makes a little difference. Yeah. Well, and, and the plan the last couple of years was not for him necessarily to be one of the uh, members of the starting rotation. 
it just sort of turned out that way as Gardner ended up filling in for guys who got hurt right. the Giants lost a young guy named Joe Nathan and then Gardner went in ended up real hot down the stretch Barry Bonds will be due up third in the last half of this inning and that one is pulled foul by Ben Davis Man, he's having a tough time down there today, John. Former halfback for the Chicago Bears. You better get a helmet on down there. He needs a bodyguard. Yeah, that's tough, tough play though. <laughs> I don't know if we could give him an error on that one. That wasn't a, that wasn't an easy play. That that couldn't be handled with routine effort. That's a, you sound like the hometown scorer there, Joe. <laughs> Dick Gregory. The ball dude, you guys call them, right? The ball dudes. Mike Kruko, the Giants broadcaster and former Giants pitcher. And those guys up, retired uh, gentlemen uh, and women who sometimes will uh, operate as the, the ball dudes. Barry Bonds, he's got 69 home runs. And he's come close a few times, might even have more. This was against Milwaukee back in the summertime. Back to that 404 marker. Some thought it was a home run. Then in a Sunday night game at Shea Stadium, August 26th. Look at that. Right off the top of the wall. And then just last weekend in San Diego, off the wall again, on which he got a single. And there are, there are a few others as well, Joe. Yes. But I suppose anybody could say that. Yeah, most most guys that hit a lot of home runs do have some near misses. That one is into the alleyway by Cesar Crespo. Bonds has to go get it, and Crespo has a double. Now let's get an update with Bill Pito. John, thanks. The Phillies a golden opportunity, maybe letting it slip away. Brandon Duckworth, the young right-hander, walking Mike Lowe with the bases loaded. Duckworth out of the game. Braves lost today, but the Phillies are losing. They're down 4 0 in the sixth. Well, the, uh, the Phillies, at this point, they're in the same spot as the Giants. They started the day two games out, seven to play. And they need to take advantage of the fact that the Braves lost to get to within one game. Joe mentioned the differences. Uh, I mean, some seem obvious, but some a little more. Less obvious to being one game out with so few games left to play. The Giants need a win here. They are trailing four to two. Arizona is trailing one to nothing to the Dodgers in the last of the fourth in Phoenix. And Gardner misses ball one to Alex Arias, who has hit a double play. And then in the fourth inning, he hit a double that started a two run rally that put the Padres ahead. Crespo at second. Mark Gardner. Curveball. He's always had a good one. That one taken. Two balls and no strikes. Damian Jackson is on deck. Barry Bonds, as we mentioned, coming up third in the last of the inning. And Bonds, who has hit 63 of his home runs lifetime against the Padres. No other player has homered that often against San Diego. It's a called strike on the outside. Levon, or rather, uh, Dale Murphy is next on the list with 60. Bond 63. Dale Murphy hits 60. Johnny Bench 47. Mike Schmidt 47. Pretty big drop off after that. But for Bonds, Padres have been one of his favorite teams against which to hit home runs, and including this year, maybe especially this year, he's hit 11 of his home runs this year against San Diego. And so far against Brian Tolberg, however, today Bonds has walked and grounded out to Shore. And curveball popped up. Shallow right field. Could be trouble. Vanderwall coming in in a hurry. Gets there now. Makes the catch. But Kent and Snow are going out on it. So the Giants are coming up. Bernard Aurelia and then Barry Bonds sitting on 69 homers. Be down to just one game. Ricky Gutierrez, sack fly. And the Cubs lead Houston 7 6, top nine. Okay, Bill, here the Giants trailing four to two. They have the top of the order up against Tolberg. Marvin Bernard drops a bunt, but foul. Trying to push one up the third base side. Bernard has grinded out to second and flied out to shallow right. The Giants need base runners here. The uh, 
the best way for Barry Bonds to get pitches to hit is for the, the, the batters in front of him to get on base. True. Bonds do up third in the inning. And Bernard takes a ball. One ball and one strike. The Giants got one in the first after Aurelia and Bonds walk. Kent hit a single to drive in a run. Santiago homered in the second, but now they trail. Bernard grounds one into right field. A base hit. We're going to take a look at Barry Bonds in 1998 and here in the year 2001 and see if we see any differences in his stance. If you look on the left, he looks a little cramped here, and he, that's when they were pitching him inside and they were able to get him out. This year, he's more straight up. He's not cramped. Everything is free, and when they try to come inside, it's usually a number that counts on up to 69 because he can handle the inside pitch a lot better now, and I think it's because of his stance, the way he approaches the ball from from his stance before it was cramped now he's very free. But you really yeah word seemed to get around the league that you could get Barry out on those inside exactly. pitches. Well you could. And uh, now when they try it they regret it. A really a base hit to left field. And so they have set the stage for Barry Bob. Now Bernard heading for third and he makes it. Good hitting by Aurelia and good base running there by Bernard. He kind of lulled Ricky Henderson into thinking he was going to stop at second base, and then he took off. But it was good hitting by Aurelia because he waited on that first pitch curveball and looped it to left field. Now they just about have to pitch to Barry, I would think. But you never can take that for granted because sometimes they figure they'd rather pitch to Kent with the bases loaded than to give up three runs on one swing to Barry. Rich Aurelia with his 198th hit of the year. He leads the National League in that category. And I have to tell you how calm Barry Bonds is now. He cruised in today on his motorcycle. He comes to the ballpark in his motorcycle and his leather jacket and, and his helmet. Looks very relaxed. He has walked and grounded out. Three infielders play to the right side of second. Two men on, nobody out. Tolberg the pitcher. He didn't appear interested in pitching to him there. The changeup missing. That looked like the first pitch he threw him in the beginning of the ball game. Two-year-old Aisha, his daughter. Just inside. Two and Oda Bonds. That didn't look like he was trying to pitch around. It looked like he was trying to sneak one by. Two and Oda Barry Bonds. Only Mark McGuire has ever hit 70 home runs. Three years ago, he established that record. Change up, three and zero. So far, Tolberg has pitched along the lines of anybody but Bond. Exactly, he definitely. And as I said, that may benefit Jeff Kent because Kent will be in this situation. You know, a lot down the stretch here. Well, he'll get a chance to drive in runs. They're not going to let Barry beat them. It's a four-pitch walk. Nary a pitch in the strike zone. Bond has seen nine pitches today, and only one has been in the strike zone. And he swung at that one and grounded it to the shortstop. So the bases are loaded for Kent. Kent, who's had 14 hits in his last 30 at bats. Well, let's take a look at this at bat again, a typical at bat for Barry. I mean, pitches that they say, if you want to swing, go ahead and swing, but we're not going to give you anything close. And I have to tell you, that's one thing that you have to admire about Barry Bonds. He has not hurt his team any time in these types of situations. He could have swung at that 3 and 0 pitch and put the ball in play, uh, but he has not done anything to hurt his team. He's only tried to help. And I have to tell you, I, I admire what he's done under those circumstances. So it's very difficult when you're sitting on 69 to take that 3 0 pitch there, even though it wasn't a strike. 167 times he has walked this year. The Padres are going to get some activity going in their bullpen. Kent has singled home a run and lined out to left today. Curveball just off the outside. One ball and no strikes. Kent, as we said, 14 hits in his last 30 at bats. Starting last weekend against the Padres, he had been in a, a slump and an RBI slump before that. 
But now he has started to, uh, to hit with that authority with which the Giants are accustomed. Kent, with over 100 RBIs, four straight years, his first four years with the club, the only other everyday second baseman to have done that was named Rogers Hornsby. So Kent trying to make it five straight years. He has 95 runs battered in. And David again, Lee up in the bullpen. He's going to get a lot of opportunities just like this. And the Giants' fate is going to be pretty much in his hands, I believe, down the stretch. The infield double play down. Four to two, the Padres lead. And the slider misses. Two and up. Well, he can't pitch around everybody. Well, that's a good point. But he's trying. John Vanderwall, another tough hitter, a left handed batter, is on deck. So this is a very big pitch for Tolbert. 2 0 the count for the dangerous Kent. And 3 0. All right, now if you're Dusty Baker, no. do you say go ahead and swing or not? I don't think so. Uh, but, you know, that that's, doesn't mean it's not the thing to do. It just means I wouldn't. Uh, there are too many. The positives, the negatives could outweigh the positive here because you got a rally going. The guy's afraid. And maybe Kim will swing at something out of the strike zone. Well, that's a, a good pitch. He didn't groove it. It was down at the knees, over the plate for a strike. Well, and the point is, if you take the three and zero pitch in that situation, now you have another one. He's in the same situation he was before. Three and one. Bernard, Aurelia, and Bonds, the base runners. Aurelia at second, the possible tying run. There you see him at the top of the screen. Bonds, the possible go-ahead run. Over first base, nobody out. Three and one, the count. Kent swings, liner to left. Henderson back and makes the catch at the warning track. Bernard tags up and scores. Kent with his second RBI of the day, a line shot that made it to the warning track in left field. That's one of those balls that well, all he, he didn't miss do, by much hitting a slam. All he needed to do was get it in the air. I mean, he hit it hard enough. He just didn't get it high enough. Kent with two RBIs today, 96 for the year. And watch, this is the point, 3 and 0, you're going to get the same pitch, and he does. He got a 3 and 1 fastball. I mean, he is. Tolbert is very lucky <laughs> because Tolbert is very lucky because that ball was right there where Kent likes it, and he drilled it. He just didn't get it high enough. Now Vanderwall. Curveball in the dirt. Smothered by Ben Davis. One ball to no strikes. John Vanderwall, he has a real hard time getting going. The Giants acquired him, and he was in the midst of his worst slump of the year in Pittsburgh. And he continued on that way for a while with the Giants before he finally got it going. One ball and no strikes to Vanderwall. Ooh, that's a, a pitcher's strike right there, a changeup to the outside part of the plate, down around the knees. One ball, one strike. Now, if Vanderwall had swung at that pitch, he might well have hit a double play ball. Now, change up moving away and down. Nice pitch there by Tolbert. But that's what he's been trying to do. He's been trying to make all perfect pitches. Four to three Padres. Two men on. Vanderwall lifts a fly ball along the left field line. Foul. Henderson comes over, but it is in amongst the spectators. One ball, two strikes. The Dodgers still leading Arizona one to nothing. They're in the top of the sixth inning in Arizona. John Hope Park for L.A. in that game. Albi Lopez who was a, a trading deadline acquisition by the Diamondbacks. And Lopez trying to avoid losing his 20th game of the year. Overall, he was with Tampa Bay earlier this season. One and two to Vanderwall. Base hit could tie the game. Change up very high outside. Two and two. I say change up might have been that he was trying to throw a curveball. Yeah, well, I, I think it was a change up. But every, I mean, he, I don't know if he throws many other pitches. He throws different kinds of change ups, it appears. He throws one that sinks, and he throws a pretty much a straight change up. Two and two to John Vanderwall. We're in the fifth inning. Tolberg ready. It's back at a really. A bloop into left field for a base hit. Henderson does not have much of an arm. Aurelia will score without a throw, and the game is tied. Bond stopping at second. And Vanderwall 
Gets the big hit to tie the game. Well, he tried, finally tried to throw a fastball, and he threw it on the inside part of the plate. He jammed Vanderwall, and he was unlucky that he becomes a base hit. Well, it's not in enough. It jams him, and he goes the other way. It's just a fastball in, and Vanderwall does a good job of fighting it off to left field for a base hit. But he had not thrown many fastballs. He's throwing change-ups and curveballs. And so when he did throw the fastball, Vanderwall wasn't ready for it, but he was able to fight it off. David Lee up in the bullpen for San Diego. Bruce Bochy, the manager, wearing the beard, talking to Greg Booker, the pitching coach. That's Bonds at second now. Vanderwall at first, and Snow in a curveball for a called strike. Snow has grounded out to third, and he has hit into a force play. Getting a hit with a man in scoring position, that was. A big problem for JT for much of this year. Getting only 167 for the year in that situation, all told. But although he's had a few hits here lately that have helped the Giants in the stretch run. One ball, one strike to Snow. You see his uh, his season with men in scoring position. Although one time I think he was, he was something like four for 49. So he's come on lately. And that is low for a ball. Two and one. And you can see it'd be very difficult, in my opinion, to play behind Colbert because he throws so many pitches just in the strike zone, just out. There's so many, and it's hard to stay on your toes if you're playing defense when a guy's throwing five and six pitches to every hitter. And this is his third time through the batting order now against a veteran Giants team. They've seen everything he's got. That's too low. Three and one. He's falling behind every hitter. Well, that's the point. I mean, it's, it's very tough to pitch like that in the big leagues in a good, a good major league lineup. And you can see, I mean, everyone's trying to stay on their toes, but it's just very difficult to do. Glasgow, who's had back problems as it is. Three and one to Snow. Bonds at second. Vanderwall at first. One out. Four to four the score. Him foul. JT went up after that high fastball. It might have been ball four. Yeah, it was up, but I, I think JT saw it well, so he wanted to drive it. It's up, but watch. I mean, he gets a good swing at it. He wants that pitch. And you're sitting on a 3 1 fastball and he throws it, you can handle that. That's a pretty good swing there by JT. The ball was up a little bit, and that's why he didn't get all of it. JT, who sometimes gets flack from people, saying that he takes too many pitches. Three and two. Let's keep an eye on the base runners. Bonds at second. Vanderwall at first. One out. There they go. And Snow strikes out, and Bonds is going to be an easy out at third. So the Giants with Snow striking out into a double play, and uh, Bonds was not running the way you run on a steal. Kyle Farnsworth here for the Cubs. Orlando Merced, Houston, bring him up, sit him down. Houston loses their lead over the Cardinals in the Central down to just one game. Cubs win at 7-6. The Phillies and the Marlins. Dave Berg, a base hit. Atlanta lost today, but the Phillies are struggling as Florida now leads Philly by the score of 5-1 in the bottom of the sixth. All right, Bill, here in San Francisco on a spectacular day. Here's McCovey Cove, the inlet off San Francisco Bay behind the right field wall. So far, there have been no Barry Bonds home run salvage efforts in the Bay today. Yesterday, now that was a that was another story. Out there today, we've got motorboats, we've got rubber rafts, we've got dinghies, and there's a base hit to center against Mark Gardner by Damian Jackson. First ball swinging. That is the 11th hit by the Padres. A score tied at four. Here in the sixth inning. Tune in later tonight on ESPN when Donovan McNabb and the Eagles play host to Emmett Smith and the Cowboys in this week's edition of ESPN Sunday Night Football. Dallas, Philadelphia tonight, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Here's Tolberg. And Tolberg is two for two with a run scored and a run batted in. Maybe having his best day as a hitter in the big leagues. Now he's up there trying to bunt. 
We know he can hit. Let's see if he can bunt. <laughs> Giants bullpen is going to get busy. Four to four in the top of the sixth. St. Louis three games ahead of the Giants in the wild card race in the National League. And the Cardinals won at Pittsburgh. And of course the Cardinals have designs on the Central Division title. Which didn't seem possible. The runner going on the bunt. The bunt and run. And that works out nicely. Jackson over to second. Tolberg retired. And there is one away. Leadoff man Ricky Henderson is coming up now. Ricky Henderson. Three hits away from becoming the 25th man in history to reach 3,000 hits. One run away from equaling Ty Cobb's all-time record for runs scored in his in a career. He beat Babe Ruth's walks record already. He's 457 steals ahead of Lou Brock in that category. I mean, the way Cobb owned the run record these last 73 years, Ricky owns the stolen base record. You're right. I, I actually think that. What Ricky is about to accomplish the 3000 hits breaking Ty Cobb's run scored records the stolen bases all the things he's done. I think he is a very unique individual and I think what he has done really rivals the 755 home runs of Hank Aaron the 714 of Ty of Bay Ruth because he has dominated the game by himself just in that situation just by being Ricky Henderson. Hit with power, hits for average. I mean, he could do everything he could do. And I really think that he doesn't get enough credit for what he's done. Well, I mean, it's just sort of a, a coincidence that he's got media from all around the country and around the world yeah. here today. I mean, they're not here really to cover Ricky. No. They're here to cover Barry Bonds and the home run record. But, but Ricky is one run away from equaling one of the most enduring records in baseball history. Ty Cobb scored. His final run in 1928. I mean, since Cobb scored his last run, Babe Ruth has had his single season mark beaten and beaten again. He's had his career home run mark beaten. And yet, the Cobb runs record has withstood all assaults. In fact, there hadn't even been an assault until Ricky Henderson came along. Nobody's even come that close. And Ricky says of all the records, including the stolen base record, which you always associate with Ricky Henderson, he feels that this one is much more important, one he'd be more proud of. And because I, as he said, Joe, he said, hey, the game is about runs, getting runs, scoring more runs than the other team. Well, that's his job, so I, I can understand what he means when he says that would be more important than anything else. Because when you set out as a, as a major league player, one of your goals is to do your job better than anyone else could do it. And that's exactly what Ricky Henderson is about to do. Over the inside corner from Gardner, three and one the count. The Giants bullpen is busy. Back of Gardner, Fultz, the left-hander. John, I did some interesting research about Ricky Henderson and the 3,000 Hit Club. The other 24 members of the 3,000 Hit Club, they average 66.7 walks a year. Ricky Henderson averages 117 walks a year. What that means is 51 at bats a year. He's lost every year just because he walks more than anyone else. So you multiply that by just a 10 year period. That's 510 at bats. That's one whole season of hits he lost. And then you add, you know, the 15 years he's played. So he's lost 750 at bats. And if you just take his batting average and put those 750 at bats back in there, this guy's way up there in the hit situation. But guys like Babe Ruth, guys like Ted Williams, who were maybe the greatest hitters ever. They didn't get 3,000 hits because they walk so much. You can't walk 2,000 times normally and get 3,000 hits unless you're Ricky Henderson. That's a good point. And it's all about getting on base. There's a fly ball along the right field line. Vanderwall with Jackson tagging up at second. Vanderwall makes the catch. And Jackson was merely bluffing. He goes back to second. That's funny. He might have made it if he'd actually gone on that one. Henderson is 0 for 4 now as he heads back to the dugout. And Ricky, there's that cross. Look at him, it even gets lower and lower, but he stays there. That's why he's a good hitter. If you start in a crouch and you come up, then you're not going to hit very well. But Ricky gets into that crouch and he stays there. And that's why he's been such a good hitter throughout his career. It wasn't like that crouch was just there to get bases on balls. That crouch is there to get him into a proper stance, and then he just stays there. 
Dusty Baker's coming out. It looks like the Giants going to make a, a pitching change here, a double switch. Andres Galarraga, as Dusty talks with John Schulock. Galarraga is going to go play first base, replacing J.T. Snow. And the Giants are going to uh, bring in the pitcher as well. You've got the switch hitter Jimenez coming up, and then the left-handed slugger Ryan Klesko behind him. And Dusty's going to bring in the left-hander Aaron Foltz. Four to four in the sixth. Bell Park in San Francisco, down on the the corner of Third and King, on the edge of San Francisco Bay. There's Gato Grande, Andres Galarraga in to play first base now. He'll hit ninth in the Giants order and be due up third in the last of the sixth inning. The new pitcher is Aaron Fultz. That moves Jimenez, a switch hitter, around to bat right handed. He has a hit with a little less success as a right handed batter than he has as a lefty, and Fultz has retired him both times that he's faced him. Plays a 259 hitter from the right side where he's a 281 plus three hits today from the left side. Yeah, we, if we didn't. Feel he was a good hitter left handed before today. Right. He's turned us around on that. Three singles, including an RBI today. Jimenez, a, a real hot prospect out of the Yankees organization. He was part of the uh, Jay Witasic trade when the Yankees were trying to fortify their bullpen. But, you know, that was soon after we saw that game at Shea Stadium where the Mets scored seven runs in the bottom of the eighth. The day where Stanton and Rivera were not really going to be available. Fly along the right field line. Vanderwall gets there. Just into foul territory on the bullpen mound. Fultz does his job. One man left. Last of the sixth inning now. Santiago Martinez and Galarraga coming up. Major League Baseball coverage in the pennant races. Uh, presented by Nextel on ESPN. The Padres for the Giants for last of the sixth inning coming up from Pacific Bell Park. The ballpark built in the old style on a relatively small piece of real estate, much like Ridley Field, Fenway Park. Only, in fact, a little bit less than 13 acres of land here for this ballpark. But they left a little bit of extra room out there, Joe, for a huge glove, <laughs> I guess, for whenever McGuire comes to town, <laughs> and a, a huge bottle of Coke. So it's a, it's a small ballpark. A la Wrigley Field, Ebbets Field. There's a bunt by Santiago, but it's foul. On one the cut. Santiago has homered and he's been called out on strikes. And out in right field, I mean, we have. It's an all time McCubby Cove record for maritime craft out there. And they're enjoying the sunshine. Although the water, the temperature of that water is about 55 degrees. So that's, that's the place to cool off today. Yeah, on an 80 degree day, I guess that works. Surfboards, rubber rafts. I'm sure there's a few rubber duckies out there. Now I don't know how those guys got into that boat, <laughs> and I don't know how they're going to get out. I hope they don't get any big waves. Talk about water safety. I need to check that. But you you said it earlier. It'd be tough for Bonds to go into McCovey Cove today. That would be. The odds are against him. It would be into a boat or yes. into a raft or onto a surfboard. But actually hitting one into the water, there's no water available. <laughs> I guess if if Barry needed a hint, they put a target on that boat across the the other side uh, of the that's, that's asking a little bit too much from Barry. I mean, we need a little more wind for yeah. him to reach that spot. <laughs> one and two to Santiago. Oh, just a bit outside. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, Santiago couldn't have hit him with a strike because if he hit a home run off a fastball, they've thrown him a lot of curveballs, and now he fires a fastball just off the outside corner. So he's been trying to get him out with breaking balls, and he tried to sneak that fastball by him. And the curveball right to the shortstop, Jimenez. And there is one away. Barry Bonds, 0 for 1 with two walks today. However, Friday. He launched a, a, a monumental shot out there to deep center. 438 feet was the official measurement. It was quite a blast. And then yesterday, a line drive against Chuck McElroy over the wall, over the arcade, over everything into San Francisco Bay. That was number 69. 
Giants go on the road after today's game. Three games in Houston before coming back here. Bonds would really like to equal the record, break the record here in San Francisco at home. Owen won the count. Ron Vallone, a left-hander, is scheduled to go for Houston on Tuesday. Shane Reynolds, a right-hander with a great splitter, will go on Wednesday. And of course, they only have a one-game lead over Houston now, or, or Houston has only a one-game lead over St. Louis now in that Central Division. They're not just getting ready for the postseason. Houston has some unfinished business, so they'll be careful how they pitch to Barry. Well, but I think that also works in Barry's favor too, John. They have to think about winning the game first, and you can't just continue to walk a guy. You know, when you're trying to win a game, because the more people you put on base and in Ron Field, the more runs. Yeah. On the center and caught out there by Crespo. Oh, Martinez retired. Two down. Well, yeah. In other words, like today we saw two on, nobody out. Bonds up, right. and he walked with Kent coming up. The Astros would pitch to him. Might be uh, less likely to do that. Well, I think the Astros. It's more important to win the ball game. Whereas if you're San Diego and you're Tolberg out there, you're just trying to survive. So there is a difference in their approach, and there is the single season home run record. Barry now number two, of course, behind Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa with 66, and he's he's. Uh, Threatening to hit 60 again this year. He has 59. And the only names on that list Babe Ruth, Roger Maris, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, and now Barry Bond. Those yeah. are the only five in the history of the game who've reached as many as 60. Here's Galarraga, 40 years old, and he just gave this Giants club a jolt of adrenaline when he joined them. They were looking dead in the water. They were only three games over 500. They were having a terrible time scoring runs. Galarraga walked into the clubhouse late July in Denver with a big smile on his face and the whole clubhouse just picked up. Galarraga drove in a couple of big runs that day and he'd been driving him in ever since he was driving in more than one a game for his first three weeks with the club and the Giants got a hot. They started a nine game winning streak the day he arrived with the Giants to see his numbers and that includes only 35 games started so he's had 33 RBIs as a Giant. And has only started in 35 games for them. Colorado, as you see, Peter McGowan, the uh, Giants' chief executive, along with Commissioner Bud Selig, down in the uh, the ownership box down near the Giants' dugout. And Joe, I'm not sure because we can't see the screen, but I I feel very strongly that they're watching the game on ESPN. So be careful what you say. 3 2 pitch and a curveball strikes him out. Big, sharp, dropping curveball from Tolberg. The Giants go down in order. We head to the late innings. Klesko coming up. It's tied at four. Here's the game that will not end. Bottom 15. Alfonso Soriano trying to steal. He's got the base, but he comes off the bag. He's out. Cal Ripken has played every single inning. Now in a rain delay, Ripken 0 for 7. He struck out. Four times. Oh, for seven. Wow. He was over four yesterday. Meanwhile, here it is four to four, top of the seventh. Ryan Klesko against Aaron Fultz. The Giants bullpen busy. With the right handed batting trammel up next. And that's too far into Klesko. Two and oh. Klesko has grounded out twice and hit a foul fly to Barry Bonds at left. So he is. 0 for 3 in this game. Over the inside corner for a strike. And it is 2 and 1. Klesko was involved in a big play as you see Tim Worrell up in the Giants bullpen, the veteran right hander. Klesko attempted to steal third in the third inning. Throw appeared to have him beaten, but it was not handled by Ramon Martinez. Rolled away from him. Klesko got up and scored the run that tied the game. Giants had jumped out to a 2 0 lead after two innings, only to see the Padres get two in the third to tie and two more in the fourth to go ahead. The Giants scored two in the fifth to retie. Yeah. Is that a swing? Yeah. Yes. Strike three. One away in the Padres' seventh inning. Dusty Baker coming out. Looks like a pitching change, and that gives us an opportunity to tell you that this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. Uh, the commissioner of baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. 
And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. And don't forget, for the most extensive coverage of Major League Baseball, log on to MLB.com. It's all there for you. Major League Baseball, connect with it. Warrell coming in from the Giants bullpen. Bubba Trammell coming up. It's four to four in the seventh. We'll be back. Powell up the first base side right by Alan Trammell. No relation to Bubba. Dick Gregory, the former Bears halfback. The ball dude down there made a nice play. Yeah, got one finally. Didn't have to dive for it. Didn't have to leap for it. John, I think we're seeing a, and a little different Dusty Baker today in the way he's managing. I mean, he knows the importance of today's game. And uh, I think he's you see him, you know, changing pitchers to match up better. We saw him take Levon Hernandez out a lot earlier than he normally does. We've seen him bring in, you know, start the inning with folks, now bring in Warrell to face the right hander. That's not normally Dusty's style. He usually gives pitchers chances to, you know, succeed. You know, against whether it's right handed or left handed hitter coming up. But we, we see the importance of today's game and it's reflected in the way that he's managing. Trammell hits a high drive deep down the left field line into the corner. This one is way back there. It is a home run. Bubba Trammell with a soaring drive down the left field line, his 25th home run of the year. And the Padres are back ahead five to four. So, as it turns out, this was a move that did not work. Did not work. He went from a, a throwing him a slider on the first pitch to hit off the end of the bat, had a weak swing, and you could see Bubba Trammell talking to himself. And then the next pitch, he turns around not, and, and drills it over the left field wall. He was very upset with himself on the first pitch, which was a slider. And you can see that pitch just hangs right in the middle of the plate. And it's 0 1 now to Ben Davis, fouling it back to the screen. And Bubba was right on that one. Way over the wall in left field down the line. Trammell, who's been a journeyman and a, a, a part time player until this year. And you know, he made some headlines earlier in the year when he came out and said that if Kevin Towers, the general manager, would guarantee that he gets 500 at bats, he would play for free this year just to show that he was good enough to get that many at bats. Well, he's going to come close, and, and he, but not because he would play for free, but because he's earned it. Yeah. He got 25 homers and 91 runs batted in, and he celebrated with that home run today because they announced earlier before the game that he just signed a three year contract extension with the Padres. One ball and two strikes. I'm not sure if that contract extension included the a complete season. refund of this year's salary. <laughs> Although by by comparison to most big league salaries his salary this year was not that much. Yeah. Two and two to Ben Davis. It was funny because I was laughing with Ricky Henderson before the game and you see Nunez warming up in the pottery bullpen and Ricky says Joe I'm not making the kind of money these guys are making. <laughs> Davis right off his foot two and two and one time Ricky Henderson was the highest paid player in the game for about a week yeah. and then uh, Kirby Kirby Puckett, Puckett passed him. Well, Ricky, I mean, you know, in, in in ways, it's it's kind of bittersweet. He's had this great career, but he's also been a a, a baseball gypsy. Yeah. Was he been in eleven different teams over the years? And that's true. I mean, I mean, it is looking at him statistically and what he's accomplished. It is surprising that he has played for so many teams. Two and two to Ben Davis, and right to the shortstop Aridia. Not number two. Meanwhile, here's an update with Bill Pito. All right, John Giants as play begins two games behind first place Arizona D backs and Dodgers. Mark Grace is on second, the tying run with two out. The Steve Finley grounds out to Dave Hansen at first, and it remains one nothing Dodgers now playing the top of the eighth. Wow, John Hope Park with a two hit shutout through seven. The Diamondbacks by two over the Giants. So the Diamondbacks are down by just the one, but the Giants are also down by one. We're in the seventh inning here. We're in the eighth inning there. The batter, Cesar Crespo, has walked, struck out, and doubled. Now the bunt. The bear had to pick up. Martinez. Nice play. So the Giants are trailing again. You saw the left hander Nunez up in the bullpen. Barry Bonds is due up third. Bernard, Aurelia, and then Bonds.
ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball presented by Nextel. The Padres five, the Giants four. Last of the seventh inning, there's the look at McCovey Cove. It is jammed, hoping for a long one from Barry Bonds. Be sure and stay tuned after the ball game. Sports Center with Reese Davis and Brian Kenny. All of the big stories from the world of sports on this day. And following Sports Center, stay tuned for NFL Prime Time here on ESPN. And uh, we thought we had seen all the nautical craft, perhaps that it was possible to see, but a new addition to the McCovey Cove Armada. <laughs> He's hoping the number 70 will land, I guess, right in the middle of that big rubber basket. Barry Bonds today has seen nine pitches and has had only one swing in the first inning, Joe, four wide ones. Well, the problem is, how do you keep your timing when you're not swinging? I mean, it usually takes hitters a couple of swings just to get their timing down in a ball game. And Barry only had this one swing in his first, second at bat. That's the only time he swung the bat in this entire ball game. But there is a he's a different Barry Bonds now than he was last year and even at the beginning of the year. When he would be walked like that before he'd get upset. Now he doesn't. There's a calmness about Barry now that I didn't see at the beginning of the season. You know, the more I talk to him and the closer he inches toward the record, the calmer he seems to have become. I mean, he's a lot different person now than he was at the beginning of the year. Remember he said once. You know, I, if I don't hit another home run, I don't have to talk to your reporters anymore. But now I think he kind of embraces the, the press conferences and talks. He even brings his little daughter in with him sometimes. So he's a little different person now than he was at the beginning of the season. And, and, and I think he's starting to enjoy this pursuit of the record. Here's Eric Davis pinch hitting for Marvin Menard, 22 year old left hander Jose Nunez on to pitch for the Padres and a slider outside. Nunez. A rule five draftee by the Dodgers at the winter meetings last year. But the Dodgers started the year with him as their only left hander. And he got roughed up. They finally gave him up. The Padres went for him, saying, hey, we're not really in the pennant race. And this is a guy with a good arm, and he actually has found himself. A guy who had never been above A ball until this year. He has a 3.42 ERA in 52 games with San Diego. And Bochi does not hesitate to use him in big spots. Davis, bloop, and that's going to fall. Base hit. So Eric Davis, in the final year of his career, he earlier announced that this would be it. He gets a pinch hit single, and now Calvin Murray, a very fast man, is going to go in and run for him. Eric Davis with his sixth pinch hit of the year. But well, Nunez started him off with a big sweeping curveball. He comes back with a look, looks like a little slider. And he jams him, but he flares it in the right center field. As the players say, that's a knock. Barry Bonds comes out on deck now. Nunez to face Rich Aurelia. Aurelia faced Nunez in the first week of the season at Dodger Stadium and homered against it, which was Aurelia's first home run of this year. Aurelia has hit more home runs than any National League shortstop other than Ernie Banks this year. The year where Alex Rodriguez broke Banks' home run record by a shortstop. Fastball outside. Aurelia today has walked. He's hit a comebacker and he has singled as part of that fifth inning rally, scored a run. Five to four, the Padres lead. Padres, if they take a lead into that eighth inning and or especially the ninth inning they can be real tough to overtake with Trevor Hoffman in the bullpen Aurelia into right center field Trammell going back into Death Valley out there that's not the place to hit one 421 to that spot in the ballpark and really is gone and now with one away Barry Bonds to the plate the sellout crowd of Somewhere around 41,000 at Pacific Bell Park here in San Francisco. They've already put in their votes for Barry Bonds as the MVP. And it's, a, it's going to be a unique race in that a couple of weeks ago I thought Sammy Sosa had the inside track. Earlier in the year I thought Luis Gonzalez had the inside track. But guess what? This guy here has really dominated and led his team to where they are here in the pennant race. So 
We'll have to wait and see how the voting is passed. The shift is on for Bonds. Nobody's playing third base. Bonds 0 for 1 with two walks. Just missing inside. That may be the best pitch the closest pitch to a hit he's had. And you see the shift on over at shortstop is the third baseman, Alex Arias. hit by the pitch for the eighth time this year and that moves the possible tying run into scoring position and again Jeff Kitt's going to be hitting with a runner in scoring position and he's done a good job today single in the first inning to drive in a run hit a sacrifice fly in the fifth inning to drive in a run well this is just a I don't know I guess it was a fastball it was supposed to be in and remember if you're left handed they try to pitch Barry inside and that's one of the reasons you wear that padding on your elbow because that got him right on the elbow. Watch, right on the elbow. Well, you're gonna hear it. Hit him right. That's why he's wearing that armor. Right. So now Jeff Kent is coming up and Bruce Bochy is gonna remove the left-hander. He's got another rookie who's done a great job for the Padres, Jeremy Fikach, warming up in the bullpen. So Bochi is gonna make the double switch here. It appears Fikach is summoned from the bullpen. So Kent, who has had two RBI opportunities today, has delivered a run each time. Five to four Padres will be back. They were disappointed that Bonds was not able to launch one into the cove. He got hit by the pitch, and the fans booed young Jose Nunez right off the field. There's Wiki Gonzalez, the new catcher, replacing Ben Davis as part of the double switch. And the 26 year old right handed Jeremy Fikach from Shiner Texas comes on to pitch out of uh, Southwest Texas State University and he's done a great job of the Padres since been called up in the minor leagues you see his numbers right there a 0 0.86 ERA only 11 hits in 21 innings and only five bases on balls in those 21 so one home run allowed that was to the Giants however. Jeff Kent facing him for the first time. The possible tying run, Murray at second. Almost a wild pitch, a nice save there by Wiki Gonzalez. One ball, one strike. The Giants' bullpen is also busy. Jeff Kent with two men on in the first inning and one out. Singled home a run. With the bases loaded and nobody out in the fifth inning, he lined a ball with a warning track in left, caught by Henderson for a sacrifice fly. In between, with nobody on, he lined out the left. So he's hit the ball hard. He's been hitting the ball hard now for the last week or so. 14 hits in his last 30 at bats. There's Felix Rodriguez, the hard throwing right handed. The setup man in front of Rob Nen, warming up in the Giants' pen. Five to four, the Padres lead. This is a big spot. Kent down the third base side, and it's a fair ball. Arias gets the one out there, and Murray takes him out just to. Make sure that there was no thought of a throw to first. So, two down here, and here's an update with Bill Pito. John, developments in Arizona. D backs are down one. Eighth inning, bottom eight, Midray Cummings base hit. Craig Council rounding third. Throw cut off. Cummings trying to go to second is out. Council trying to get back to third is safe. So he's on third. Tony Womack, base hit. Ball game is tied. 1-1. One, one. d back still batting in the bottom of the eighth. All right, so one to one there. The Giants trailing here. And now the Giants in need of a win and at the moment in need of a big base hit. Here is Vanderwall. He delivered a hit to not get a run in the fifth inning. He is one for two with a walk. He had the game winning hit in the Giants' dramatic come from behind victory seen here on ESPN last Wednesday night at Dodger Stadium. Changed up on him and it's 0 and 1. Tough pitch. Murray at second. Bonds at uh, rather uh, Bonds now at second. Murray having been forced out at third base. And remember, Barry's not running very well right now, so he could have a play at the plate on a hard line drive to the outfield. 0 and 1 the count. Slider in the dirt. One ball, one strike. 
Vanderwall 14 homers 67 runs driven in. The Giants they've had a problem as a team. We mentioned Kent with a, a low batting average with men in scrum position and that's been a team wide problem. Only two teams have fared worse in those kind of spots than the Giants. Vanderwall a high lazy fly that will end up in the seats. Henderson gave chase. One ball and two strikes to Vanderwall. I think it was only the Mets and the Brewers had fared worse in the league. Although you see now 13th in the league with a 250 batting average. That's what's great about ESPN baseball coverage. We mentioned something and there it is. Well, but you got last there like you said is left on base. Hoping not to leave those two men on. Bonds at second, Kent at first. Again, when you're facing the Padres, you don't like to go into the eighth or ninth inning trailing because Trevor Hoffman is one of the best in the game at wrapping up games. And slider, Vanderwall with a pretty good eye to take that one. Fikac going for the strikeout. Two and two the count. Jeremy Fikach. He was a 19th round draft choice, 1998. High and tight. So now it's a full count, three and two. Well, that's a, a little bit of a yeah, an extra break for the Giants. Bonds will get the running start now from second base, furthering his chances of scoring and a base hit to the outfield. Five to four, San Diego leading. There go the runners. And Vanderwall is down on strikes. The inning is over. He changed up and got him. The Giants lacking the big hit into the eighth inning. Still five to four, San Diego. SBN's coverage of Major League Baseball. Top of the eighth inning from San Francisco. Giants fans get a little. Nervous, a little worried. The Giants down five to four. Calvin Murray stays in the game to play center field. And the veteran Sean Dunstan goes in to play right field, part of a double switch with Felix Rodriguez coming on to take them out. <laughs> Look at Rodriguez's year 75 games, 75 innings pitched, and only 49 hits allowed, 87 strikeouts. A real hard throw. Sharply hit ground ball. And right through Aurelia, Alex Arias is aboard. An error by Aurelia. That was interesting. It looked like he did everything right, except he got it right at the edge of the outfield grass. And that may have thrown him off a little bit. Now watch where he gets it. He's going to be right on the edge of the grass. But it's just appeared that it went through his legs. Yeah, he just didn't get down quick enough. Now is that the best way to field that ball to get in front or would no. you be better at getting over and just playing it side side. Well I think he felt like he could get in front of it but I think the ball was hit a little harder. You always try to get in front of it if you can. So I understood his point but it, it just appeared that he maybe would have been better off backhand as you said but you always as an infielder you try to get in front of the ball first. That's your first thought. Well, the, the Giants have had many a game this year where they've come up short and it was a mistake an error. It was the difference in the game in a tight game. In this game, a run they gave away back in the third inning. Is Hornet in there? Uh, and really, it's not just the one run, but in effect, they gave, up, gave away two runs because of that. It was a Fresco going to third base in the third inning on a, a, the front end of a double steal. They appeared to have him thrown out, but Ramon Martinez. Never caught the ball. It rolled away, and not only was he not out, but Klesko scored, and uh, that was the. At this point, a run that maybe has the Giants trailing in this game, five to four. Padres have an unearned run. The Giants have received no such gift from the Padres today. Damian Jackson, the hitter, one ball, one strike, the count to him. They may, you know, really may not have been thinking it was possible for somebody to hit the ball that hard against Rodriguez. <laughs> Usually, Rodriguez comes into the game, guys uh, hit pop ups or strike out. Arias jumped on that first pitch and hit it real hard. He's at first, Galarraga on the bag with him. 
Five to four. San Diego leading in the eighth inning. Two and two. In that uh, game in Arizona, Arizona got just the one run, and they have gone to the ninth inning. The Dodgers won, Arizona won. Arizona will stay home to face Colorado three times this week while the Giants go to Houston for three at Enron Field. And that's a foul out of play. Meanwhile, over the weekend, the Giants come back home to face the Dodgers. And Arizona will travel to Milwaukee. The big crowd, rather quiet right now, rather subdued. The Giants. Are trailing Barry Bonds has not hit a home run not really had much of a chance to hit a home run he's still only seen the one pitch one strike in the game yeah he's only swung at the hanging curveball well it wasn't a hanger but a curveball up in the strike zone struck him out I think that's where Felix is more it was more effective up in the strike zone now an update with Bill Pito. All right, John, as we showed you, Arizona had tied up the game against the Dodgers. Go ahead, run on third. Channel Park, two outs. Luis Gonzalez, down he goes on strikes. So it's 1 1. Now playing the top of the ninth from Arizona. Chan Ho Park, I mean, he's got great stuff. Great stuff. The question with Chan Ho is not about the, the wins he's had, it's why he only has 14 going into that game. He's been uh, able to effectively. Keep Arizona off the board except for that one run. There's a foul out of play by Wiki Gonzalez. <laughs> Gonzalez entered the game behind the plate when the Padres went to their bullpen in the last of the seventh inning. So the pitcher is now in the fifth spot for San Diego. Gonzalez sitting in the ninth spot. To the bag at first is Arias. The Giants are three games back in the wild card race behind the Cardinals, or were at the start of the day. But here in San Francisco, they don't talk about that since they're closer in the division race. And there you're only battling one team, whereas in the wild card, you're facing both the Cardinals and the Astros if they interchange in the order there. You've got to beat both of them. You know, the Astros have the three with the Giants coming up this week, and then they finish the year with three games in St. Louis. The Cardinals, meanwhile, have three games in Milwaukee, and then they finish at home with the Astros. One ball, one strike. Good fastball on the outside. One and two to Ricky Gonzalez. Arizona, we told you their remaining schedule. The Dodgers have been uh, just about eliminated entirely. The Phillies, after their game today in Florida, they go to Atlanta for three, and they really need to make something dramatic happen when they get to Atlanta. Ooh, that was close. Two and two. Ricky Henderson would be next. Ricky has uh, cast a long shadow over the New York position, and uh, long after he has retired, his influence will be felt as to setting the standard for how it should be done. Phillies will have their three in Atlanta this week, and then they finish up with three at Cincinnati. The Braves, after their three with the Phillies, will host the Florida Marlins for the final weekend of the year. Two and two the count. Dallas fouls it back to the screen. Hanging tough against Felix Rodriguez. Two and two the count. You have to look at it realistically. If you're the Giants, you need to win today's ball game. And hope Arizona loses because if you're going to Houston, 
it's going to be very difficult for you to go there and say I'm going to sweep Houston. They're in a pennant race. You're in a pennant race. So I mean you go there realistically if you win two out of three you can't be upset with yourself. But that means Arizona would have to lose all three in order for you to catch up. In that shorter span. So I think the Giants are in a position where they're going to have to win at least five out of the six games they're going to be playing. I think that's where they're going to end up if they can if they win today's ball game. So the odds are already long for the Giants. Exactly. And their schedule based on the winning percentages of the teams they're, they're playing play. is tougher than Arizona's schedule. Two and two the count. Slider. That's high. Three and two. But if Arizona loses today and the Giants are able to win, that'll change just the dynamics of the whole situation because there'll be a lot of pressure on both teams from that point on. Right now, the pressure's on the Giants. And San Diego is leading the Giants here. Putting the squeeze on them here. They lead five to four in the eighth. Arias is running. Strike three from his knee. Santiago's throw is too late. So Arias steals second. Another strikeout for Rodriguez. And well, Santiago used to throw it a little lower and on a string from his knees. Now he gets a little loop in it and he always ends up in that position right there. He gets his entire body behind the throw. And he's thrown out several from his knees this year at age 36. Now here is Ricky Henderson. The guy who has scored so many runs, but at this point the Padres are hoping for him to be the RBI man. Felix Rodriguez trying to prevent that. That's foul back behind the plate. Ricky is 0 for 4 in this game and 2 for 13 in this series, and he has not walked in this series either. Ricky sat out the last couple of games in Denver before coming here. He had had a, a big two days in Denver. They just couldn't keep him off the bases. But he really did not want to break the runs record in Denver. He wanted to do it either here. Where he grew up. He's from across the bay in Oakland. Began his career here with the Athletics across the bay. Either here or in San Diego, his current home. And that got him. So Ricky Henderson gets hit by a pitch. And he'll take first base. Although the way Ricky swung today, and the way D'Angelo Jimenez has swung, the Giants might have preferred to. Uh, Go after Ricky Henderson yeah. in this spot. Well, I don't think I think they were trying to get him out, but he was just trying to go inside with a fastball, and it gets away from him. And Ricky tries to get out of the way, but he gets nicked. So Ricky goes to first base. Now you don't think there's anything? Uh, no. Any, is it just a coincidence? Bonds gets hit. Now Henderson gets hit. Yeah, I think it was just a coincidence in this case because. Again, the Giants can't afford to retaliate. They'd have to put that in their memory bank, and they can do something later. But you can't, you know, you, this in this ball game, in this situation, one-run ball game, you have to be thinking about getting out rather than getting even. Plus, I mean, Bond got hit, but I mean, the pitch before that was called a ball, but it looked like a strike. Yeah. It looked like he was trying to get him out. Jose Nunez, man, Nunez, talk about being vilified when he walked off the mound he never realized how unpopular a man could be he was booed lustily by the big crowd here so here's him at he's had three hits today it's ball one Rodriguez in a jam two men on two men out and the Giants already trailing five to four the Dodgers meanwhile in Phoenix have a threat with the runners at first and third and one out there one to one the score. Five to four here, San Diego leading. Arias at second, Henderson at first. And Rodriguez is all over the place suddenly. Two and out of the count. You talk about the setup, man. As Rob Nen now runs out of the dugout, 
for the Giants bullpen. He's their closer. Rusty Baker keeping an eye on things for the Giants dugout. Looking a little bit tense right now, as you might imagine. Well, it's good to throw 96 miles an yeah, hour. That, that takes care of a lot of problems for you. When you can just reach back and throw a guy at 96 miles an hour on a 2 and 0 pitch. So then getting ready in the bullpen. You mentioned the uh, sort of almost desperate flight of the Giants now. And then who usually only gets up when the team's ahead going to the ninth inning. Now it is 2 and 2 to Jimenez. So after falling behind him, Rodriguez has gotten a couple of powerful fastballs to even up the count. The big crowd, rather tense right now. They want to cheer, they want to inspire Rodriguez, but I think many are just a little too nervous to have anything come out right now. Two men on, two men out. And Jimenez fouls it back and out of play. Two and two, the count remains. Barry Bonds, the left fielder, way over toward the left field line against Jimenez. Jimenez has been hit the boy. See how far over toward the line Bonds is out there. Murray, the center fielder, shaded toward that direction. It's Dunstan out in right field. Well, Jimenez has been serving the ball over that way, so Barry wants to protect against him doing it again. Arias and Henderson, the runners, both ready to go on anything. And it's three and two. Another fastball, and he missed again. So now the runners will be going. Arias would almost surely score on a base hit to the outfield. Ryan Klesko, a home run hitter and an RBI man on deck. Opposing hitters have only a 188 batting average against Rodriguez this year. The error by Aurelia got this all started. And he's turned this into a, a laborious inning for. Rodriguez a lot of pitches and all thrown under pressure the runners go and another fly ball off the left field line foul and back into the crowd Bonds showing that he knew what he was doing by playing so close to the line still three and two the runners go back Rodriguez has thrown 23 pitches in this inning. Rodriguez, the former catcher in the minor leagues with the Dodgers, that's how they signed him. He didn't hit that much, and it was Tommy Lasorda who thought it would be a great idea to convert him to a pitcher. But it was not until he got to San Francisco that he refined his skills enough as a pitcher to become a very effective big leaguer. Runners go, the pitch. A foul back out of play again. Into the second deck. So Jimenez against a strikeout pitcher showing that he knows how to make contact. Well, he just kind of lays the bat on the ball, and he had a couple of hits to left field like that. Rodriguez throws a little harder, so it makes you have to swing it a little harder. Five to four, San Diego. Top of the eighth. Arias ready to run from second. Henderson from first. There they go. In the air to Bonds. Fairly deep and left. He's there for the out. It is 339 feet to the left field foul pole there. That's the inning. Still 5-4. to four. Now an update from Phoenix. Here's Bill Pito. John, thank you. You mentioned the Dodgers threat. First and third. One out. Arizona here yeah, has got to turn the double play. And they are unable to turn the double play. The go ahead run scores. 2 1. D backs now up in the bottom of the line. Back to San Francisco after this. There's a, quite a, a nautical crew out there. And they've uh, found all kinds of ways to entertain themselves while waiting to uh, set sail for a Barry Bonds home run into McCovey Cove. But there has been none. The Padres have hardly given him a chance. Bonds has had. Four trips to the plate, and so far has only seen one strike, which he hit onto the ground to the shortstop. Now Jeremy Ficach to 
Sean Dunstan. Dunstan, who came into the game to play right field in the first half of this inning, hitting in the uh, spot where J.T. Snow had started the game, and then the pitcher had moved in a double switch. And Dunstan has had quite a year for the Giants. 285 average. And their top pinch hitter, 10 pinch hits, including three pinch hit homers. And you may be hearing the crowd now cheer. They have just posted the final from Arizona. So there you see it, the hand operated out of town scoreboard here. The Dodgers two, Arizona one. So we know now that a lot of folks have been doing the scoreboard watching here at Pacific Bell Park. And that slider from Peacock popped up. Foul round, Tresco. And Dunstan is retired. One away. Now let's get an update with Bill Pito. All right, John, you saw it on the scoreboard. Here's the last out. Steve Finley against Jeff Shaw. Lines one with Marquise Grissom right there. So the Giants can come back and beat the pods. They'll just be a game behind Arizona. LA winning it by the final score of two to one. Channel Park gets the win. Well, Park 15th win. Shaw with his 14th or 40th save. You see the shadows now have crossed home plate. The shadow, the long shadows of September. And this is the final day of September. The long shadow being cast by the light standard out in right field. Santiago first ball swinging. A high fly ball. Easy play in center. Crespo's got it. So just like that, two men are gone for the Giants. In the eighth inning, the Jacks need to get somebody on base to ensure Barry Bonds getting it back in the ninth inning. It's, uh, right now, Bonds is five batters away from getting up. They need to get somebody on base either here or in the ninth inning to get Bonds up. And now the Padres send their great closer out to the bullpen mound. Start warming up as Martinez takes a slider in there for a strike from Fikach. There is Trevor Hoffman. He's had 41 saves this year. Martinez hit that changeup high in the air to shallow left. And the shortstop, Jimenez, goes out to get it. And the Giants are easily retired in the eighth inning by Fikach, who's done a great job. Of setting up in front of Hoffman to the ninth inning. Cresco coming up five to four Padres. Bill Pito back in the city. The Marlins beat Philadelphia, taking two of three from the Phillies. Couple that with the Atlanta loss to the Mets, and that means that the Phillies blow a big chance. Remain two games back of Atlanta. The Mets four games off the table. Right, Bill. And of course, uh, they have the three games head to head this week. And the Phillies not really need that sweep in Atlanta, no less. There's Pedro Feliz who takes over at third base for the Giants now entering the game along with Rob Nen Giants a closer ordinarily 43 saves this year. Now he's just trying to save the one run deficit at this point. Ryan Klesko the hitter and a foul back and out of play. Klesko in the shadows Nen out in the bright sunshine. That makes it a little diff more difficult for the hitter to find the ball once it gets halfway to the plate. It's like going from a bright room to a dark room. It takes a split second to adjust, so it's very difficult. You can't see the spin on the ball either. Ooh, that was close. Actually, what happens when the ball's on its way it just looks like kind of a dirty spear. That one, uh, that last fastball clocked at 98 miles per hour. That one is hit high in the air. Shallow right. Kent is out. Now backpedaling. And he's got it. The is 0 for 5. Tony Gwynn playing his final game in San Francisco today. And he's grabbed a bat and he's going to come out on deck. As Bubba Trammell goes to the plate, the pitcher's spot due up next. And there comes Tony Gwynn. Gwynn. Who will play his final game next weekend in San Diego? Was to have played his final game as a big leaguer today, under the original schedule. And he will be the future baseball coach at San Diego State University. And when I talked to him today, John, he was very excited about that. I mean, he was 
he's comfortable with his decision. He said it was time. And he feels like he's going to enjoy working with the young kids at San Diego State. They had a brief ceremony before the game honoring Gwynn here at Pacific Bell Park. Oh. A hard slider, and nobody throws one harder than Rob Nen into the zone two to Bubba Trammell. Trammell's home run in the seventh is the reason the Padres lead right now. That broke a 4 4 tie. There's Trevor Hoffman, Galarraga, Murray, and Aurelia. Bonds would be due fourth. Somebody will have to get on base for Bonds to get up. That's Snyder. Well, I think John Shulak is calling that high strike, Joe. One ball and two strikes. Bubba Trammell, three for four in this game, celebrating his new three year contract extension agreed to before the game. Snyder fouled off to the, the right side. One and two. A hot day in San Francisco. You don't often see that. The, uh, the wet towel trying to keep John Shulock, who's working hard back there, from uh, dehydrating. I never got the official game time temperature. It had to be in the, in the 80s. Well, it was really warm in the sun when we were on the field early. That's too low, too, too. But Tony Gwynn, Joe, they had a ceremony honoring him before the game here in San Francisco. And they played Frank Sinatra singing My Way. And you know, Tony Gwynn really is very appropriate for Tony Gwynn. I mean, he could have gone numerous times and put himself up for auction as a free agent for a lot more money. Trammell is down on strikes. The high, hard one from Nen. Strike three, two down. And now Tony Gwynn one final time in San Francisco and even in a pennant race even with the excitement about Barry Bonds even with the Giants badly needing a win a, a standing ovation for Tony Gwynn in San Francisco. And I think part of what they're appreciating Joe is that he did it his way. Yeah. He said. The money is not the most important thing. I want to stay in San Diego, and I don't think he's ever regretted it. It, it stay in San Diego. Tony Gwynn, 338 lifetime average. The fans keep cheering him. Plus, it has to be difficult to hit in this situation because Tony Gwynn is a guy that concentrates really hard. And you have to have your concentration broken when you get a standing ovation like that on the road. Ball one. Tony he, Gwynn wrapping it up this year and he is hitting 327. <laughs> They've actually tried to talk him into coming back just to be a pinch hitter. He was off to such a great start when they utilized him in that role. That slider is in there for a strike. And Bruce Bochy, the one who was trying to talk him into it. But he's always used a smaller bat, 31, 32 inches. His bat sometimes looks like a little league bat. He swings it from the end, which is unusual. And that's strike two call. Gwynn versus Nen. Gwynn has four hits in nine career at bats against Nen, a 444 average. And there are not too many guys who can say that against Rob Nen. The league is hitting 201 against him this year. That's about that's about right. That's about normal. And Gwynn strikes out on that slider, a 92 mile an hour slider. And now Gwynn says so long to San Francisco. We've seen the Giants closer. Now Trevor Hoffman, the Padres closer. Barry Bonds would be due up four. The Giants are down by a run. We'll be back. From San Francisco, the Giants trailing the Padres five to four. The Giants two games back of Arizona at the start of the day. Arizona has lost its game to the Dodgers. There will be only six games left in the schedule after today. And the question is, will the Giants still be two games out heading for Houston, or will they Pulled within one game of Arizona. There is Trevor Hoffman to try and keep them two games out. 41 saves for Hoffman. 
He doesn't throw as hard as he once did. He still has the great changeup. Well, his changeup would be very effective in this situation because it's very difficult to pick up the spin on the ball because of the shadow. So Trevor Hoffman, everything is in his favor. And there you see the shadows. He'll be throwing out of the light into the dark. And it's hard to pick up the spin on the changeup or any other pitch when you're in this type of lighting. You have this type of lighting at this time of the evening. Andres Galarraga. Twelve days ago, he hit the longest home run in the history of this park, nearly hitting it up to the Coke bottle out there in left field. Down and away, one ball and no strikes. Galarraga hit a, a home run to end the game for the Giants September the 1st. Also did it here August the 2nd against the Phillies. Twice he has ended games with home runs. Too high. The Giants need a run to stay alive, and it looks like the whole roster is leaning on the railing of the dugout to get a close look. 2-0 to Galarraga. Big pitch here for Hoffman. Ooh, man, he got it by him. Well, he made a good pitch, though. He got it out there on the outside half of the plate, and the big cat was trying to get a ball that he could deposit into the left field bleachers. He's at 387 home runs lifetime, 17 this year. The outfield is very deep. And it's a foul out of play off to the right. Two and two the count. Calvin Murray is on deck. Rich Aurelia do third. And Barry Bonds would come to bat if somebody can get on base. At least one man can get on base, and Bonds will have a shot here in the ninth inning. Galarraga, who has never done well with Hoffman, and he has not seen the changeup so far in this at bat. There's the changeup, and there is one away. Well, that's what Hoffman does for you. To you, he'll set you up with the fastball, and then the bottom falls out of that changeup. He has the same motion on the changeup. This is the same motion that he had with the fastball. Great arm speed. And you see the concentration on Hoffman. You see there is a change up. It looks more like a circle change. But a lot of times they just move it back in his hand and throw it as hard as you can, and it'll only come out so, so hard. Now the Giants are going to pinch hit for Calvin Murray with Edwards Guzman. The young left handed swinger with a little power who has been the backup catcher. For much of this year to Benito Santiago. Guzman is hitting 257 with three homers, seven driven in. Barry Bonds in the hole now with Aurelia on deck. The Giants need a base runner. Fastball a strike right over the outside. 0 and 1. This is the first time Guzman has ever faced Trevor Hawkins. Be sure now to stay tuned. NFL primetime right afterward. The changeup. That is to Klesko. Hoffman covering. Oh, Klesko had a hard time getting his footing there, but he got the ball in time. And now the Giants have one last shot, and it's Richard Aurelia having a great year. Capable of hitting one out of the park himself, 36 home runs. But everybody in the park would like to just see Aurelia somehow get on base to let Bonds take a shot at it in this very important game for the Giants. Bonds on deck will often come out, look for his uh, family, his young daughter Aisha. So here is Aurelia. Only one for 11 in his career versus Trevor Hoffman. And a pop up. Shallow center. Crespo looking up into the bright sun. And Bonds does not get that chance. The Padres bullpen, Fikach and Hoffman, retires the last eight Giants in a row. And Bonds is left on deck. And the Giants are heading to Houston, still two games back in the Western Division behind the Arizona Diamondbacks. John Miller for Joe Morgan. Thanks for tuning in.
This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. NFL primetime coming up next. The Giants heading to Houston. Now a long shot in the West.